In this video, I'm going to show you three collections of comics that I've purchased in the last few weeks. This small collection of ratty, but kind of cool comics. This kind of small early 90s speculator collection. And this collection of late bronze comic books. Hello YouTube friends and neighbors. Today I am going through three collections of comic books that I've purchased in the last few weeks. This first small collection of a handful of comic books uh, my wife picked these up. Someone brought them into our store, the trade-in. Now, we don't sell comic books that much in our store, but I do put comic books in the store so that people will trade them in. I mean, I want comic books. I collect them. I like seeing them. I like when they walk in. I believe my wife traded them about $15 worth of cassette tapes for these comic books. We sell a lot of records and music stuff, cassette tapes. It's, there's some cool stuff in here. I mean, they're pretty much beat up comic books, but mostly bronze, bronze Age, a little Copper Age, a little bit modern. Let's take a closer look at this collection right here. Okay, so this is the collection that my wife traded some uh, cassettes and records for. You know, there's some cool stuff in here. This one was actually in pretty good shape, but some of the other comics are beat up. So we got a Power Man Iron Fist 117, Bartman number two, nice old Hulk, Hulk 124. It's pretty beat up. It's probably a very good. I mean, that's not too bad for a comic that age. Got uh, Hulk 153, probably in a good. And these are all in kind of ratty old bags. I need to change them, bag and board them. <laughs> in this video, I don't even know if you can see them that well. A Marvel Presents Guardians of the Galaxy number seven. A really beat up Nick Fury, Age of Shield number one. Uh, beat up Robin 2, number one of five. A Judge Dread number one, which is cool, but it's it's got some creasing on it, so it's probably only a fine. Uh, Our Fighting Forces number 138. Got a big chunk torn out of it. Uh, Superman 335 with the covers all like rolled over. Again, most of these comics weren't in that good of shape. Uh, it's still cool to get. And they traded for stuff that wasn't necessarily easy to sell. So I was okay with this trade. Uh, Kool-Aid Man. I think that was a freebie comic. I always like that one. G.I. Joe number 19. It has a little bit of creasy on the corners. Some dog ears. I got a G.I. Joe 16. I'm actually kind of glad to get some G.I. Joes because that's one thing that sells in my store really well is G.I. Joe. Anything that like 80s toy nostalgia is kind of the stuff that people want. And But I kind of want these too. So I have to go through my collection and figure out what my duplicates are. That's a great cover. I love that one. I love all these. All early G.I. Joes are my favorite. G.I. Joe number 17. Omega Men number 1. Omega Man number two, Superman 341. Lots of dog ears, lots of rips and creasing. Not in the best shape. Superman Family number 200. Bad, bad shape. It's got all kinds of tears. It's falling apart. Punisher War Journal number 18. Pretty much a worthless comic. I mean, a, a 90 comic in bad shape is just not a comic people will buy. Maybe for artwork or something. G.I. Joe number 18. Again, I love the early G.I. Joe comics. I love all the G.I. Joe comics. Uh, Marvel 201 number 98. Uh, Defenders number 20. It has a rip in the corner. And then this is probably the coolest one of the lot. But again, not... You know, this condition was terrible. But Green Lantern, Green Arrow number 77. Which I don't have this issue. So even though it's probably only a good with all the rips and... Uh, all the tears along the spine. Uh, it's a great filler copy until I can find a better one. So that was the little mini collection that we traded for. So what do you guys think of this collection? I mean, nothing too exciting. A couple of more interesting pieces. But I'm happy with this collection. And I like trading stuff in my store that's not necessarily stuff that I want or that is selling so well for comic books. Because I love comic books. That's what I want for my own collection. Okay, let's get into the next collection. Now, I would say like a month and a half ago, two months ago, I had one of my regular customers come in. He collects Latin music, uh, like light jazz, easy listening kind of stuff from the 50s and 60s. So he's really into that. Those records I don't sell for a lot, usually a dollar a piece, sometimes 
three dollars or a little bit more if they're a little bit better so he collects those and he always he comes in and he spends the whole day digging through everything i have and he usually buys like a giant stack of records for a hundred bucks but i hadn't seen him in it for a while you know i when i when he was there shopping i was happy to see him i was like you know how are you doing and he basically said you know he's been kind of broke the last year i hadn't seen him for a year so he really hadn't been able to come into the shop but it was his birthday so he's celebrating his birthday so he decided to celebrate his birthday to dig through my records for the day so i mean that's cool you know i, I like when people celebrate things in my store i like making people happy so he was with his friend and his friend said uh hey do you buy stuff i have the sega for sale i was like what do you mean he's like you know the sega system so I was a little bit confused at first, but I realized he said he was telling me he had a Sega Genesis for sale plus some games. So I was like, yeah, sure, you bring that in. And I tell, you know, I went through my spiel, you know, I buy retro video games, new video games, comic books, records, just all the kind of stuff that I'm normally looking for. So the guy who normally comes in my store overheard the conversation and he said, oh, you know what? I have a bunch of comic books I bought when I was a teenager. He kind of was investing in them, I guess. So I said, you know, you said you were broke. I want comic books. You buy records that usually don't sell that well. That's why I sell them for a dollar. If you bought in comic books, I would give you a full value trade for records. That's what I told him. So I said, if you bring in $500 with the comics, you could take $500 with the records. So he's like, okay, you know, he was thinking about it. And then like a month later, he finally contacted me and he said, I want to sell my comic books because I have some bills to pay. So I told him, you know, I don't, if I have to pay cash for them, I can't be as generous. I mean, trade, I'm happy. I'll do an equal trade many times. Or, you know, a, a healthy trade I'll do. But for cash, usually what happens is any comic book that's under the $5 range, I I can't really pay that much. There's just there are too many out there. They're hard to sell. I mean, I, and I don't even sell them. I end up keeping them. You know, my wife is just like, you're buying too many comic books. So I have to sell some to cover the cost. So for comic books that are cheaper i usually pay a quarter of the 50 cents maybe a dollar if it's something i really want if it's really bad stuff maybe 10 cents but it's rare for stuff to be just like post unity valiant that stuff you just can get so much of really cheap or a lot of the early image stuff it's just not really worth anything so that stuff i might pay 10 cents a piece for a lot of it but anything that's over that like kind of five dollar range i told him i'd pay him probably 40 to 60 percent marketplace especially if it's silver age silver age i'll always pay a little bit more than half just because it's silver age you can't get that stuff that stuff's awesome so he brought in his collection first he was scheduled to come in i forget what day it was but he was supposed to come in a certain day show me his collection he wanted to sell it so uh, another one of his friends came in and he brought this collection. I figured, hey, if we're going to be selling comics, let me come in too. So he brought in this collection. Now the guy selling me this collection said these were not comics he collected himself. These are comics that someone had given to him to help pay for some money that he owed. So this collection I would call sort of a typical 90s speculator collection. Kind of the thing that ruined the comic industry. I paid 35 for this collection. Let's take a closer look at it right here. Okay, now this is the Speculator collection that uh, I believe I paid 35 for the stack. I used to get a lot of collections like this maybe five to ten years ago. Uh, back then, no one bought them, and I would, uh, you know, people would bring them in, and I'd be like, this, these just aren't worth anything. I'd pay 10 cents a piece, try to sell them for 50 cents a dollar, and they would occasionally sell and eventually sell. But now some of the values are going up on some of this stuff. So we got Warlock and the Infinite Watch number one. I'm sure that one's selling for a bit now. We got X Men number one. A whole bag of them. <laughs> so this is what I mean by speculators. Someone bought these probably for a dollar fifty a piece times one, two, three, four. I've literally owned that comic thousands of the times and all the other variants. Okay, we got a uh, Hard Corpse number one. I mean, good shape. Everything was taken care of, at least. Uh, different variant of X-Men number one. Jaguar God number zero. I don't know anything about these comics. They look cool. I like the artwork. So I wonder if these are worth anything. Jaguar God number three. Heroes Against Hunger. I really like that cover. Creed and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one. Daredevil 154. Absolutely garbage condition. It's got like muddy stains. It's torn up. I mean, Probably not even worth trying to salvage that. Uh, Ghost Rider 15. Batman movie. Trade paperback. Alpha Flight number one. I'm finding a lot of these lately. Alpha Flight number seven. Alpha Flight number six. Alpha Flight number five. Alpha Flight number four. The Hobbit trade paperback. That's actually kind of cool. 
Aliens number three. I love these ones. Aliens number four. Aliens number three. Those are really cool. More speculation. Justice League Europe number one. Of course, number ones are going to be where the value is, right? So we might not buy two of them. Or not, how about three of them? <laughs> People were always buying piles of ones, but not necessarily the most valuable investment. Turok Dinosaur number three. Turok number two. And Turok number one. The Book of Ballads and Seas. A Charles Vest artwork. That's actually kind of cool. I once had... A giant uh, cloak and dagger splash page artwork from Charles Vest. I uh, sold it for $1,200. I kind of wish I kept it. Such beautiful artwork. Uh, Leonard Nimoy's Primordials. Now this one, I think I paid a little bit more. It's Exo Man of War, but it's the yellow printing error variant. You don't see those as often. I think that was a little bit more. Now we're getting into some of the stuff that was worth a little bit more. We had uh, another speculation. This is uh, New Mutants number 100. I believe that's the second printing. No, it's the third printing. But you know what? If you're going to speculate, you might as well buy one, two, three copies. Because you're going to become rich. <laughs> and these are... They have signs of yellowing all across the top. Because they were just bagged together. So again, the comics didn't burn each other with their acid through the shiny part. But coming off the top, it kind of leached down and burnt all the comic books. That was cool. I think I gave him a dollar or two for those. You know, they're not worth that much, but I could probably get three dollars for that. Uh, and then Infinity Gauntlet, number one. That's kind of more of the pricey one. And then this was the one comic was, that was super awesome in the lot. And the one that I probably gave him most of the value. Probably either between 10 and $15 for. Oh, it's beautiful. And Tales of Secrets, number 36 in fine condition, I would say. Really nice. I mean, it has a couple minor tears, but there's no major, I think a little bit of a stain right there. But for a comic of this age, it's beautiful. What year is this? Late six, I mean, early 60s, I think. Yeah, 1960. So that's cool. I get really excited when Silver Age stuff walks through the door. Even though most of this lot was kind of junk and I'm probably have to sell most of it because I have it already. You know, I don't really get excited. I don't want to buy stuff to sell. That doesn't really excite me that much. It's nice because it pays for other stuff. But when I get stuff like that coming in in really nice condition, I'm super happy. And I got to bag and board it before I destroy it. So that was a little speculator collection. I mean, in the past, I've had people literally bring in a long box full of... Five copies each of all the same speculator books. The X-Men 1, the Spawn 1, all that stuff. Now, Spawn 1 is now selling for something. I kind of wish I didn't sell them for a dollar or two back in the day. But can't predict everything. So what do you guys think? Did you like that collection? I mean, there's some cool stuff. There was one really awesome comic book. I mean, this... I'm so happy to have that comic book. That comic book's super awesome. I wish there was more of this older stuff. This, you know, the... This stuff, you get so much of it. I mean, it used to be a time when... I would buy a collection with at least, you know, five or ten duplicates like that every week. You know, four spawn number ones, ten bloodshot number one, you know, a pile of X-Men number one, four death of Superman. Everyone back in the day would buy four, ten, twenty of a comic that was mass produced. And it was just, it was kind of silly. I kind of wish at the time I was buying more Silver Age comics. And not even worrying about that. Because then I would have had an awesome collection. Okay, so let's go back to the guy that's my regular. So he brought in his collection right here. These, It's like a short box and a half of early bronze comics. Now, now every comic he had was in bags like this. They are so yellowed and stained with acid damage. But he's had them in these bags for 35 years. Uh, five comics or so per bag. So I opened them all up because I had to see what's in the collection and evaluate. And the comics are in pretty good shape. I'd say most of them are in fine, very fine condition. Uh, the biggest flaw is because they're stored five at a time. A lot of them have acid damage. Usually the shiny paper. This part, the acid doesn't bleach through to it. But since the comics are next to each other, off the, the gas comes off the top. That's acidic. And it will start burning. So if you look really closely, the corners are browned. It's as if the acid was wearing away at it. Um, so a lot of them have the corners that are burned. But other than that, you know, they're in pretty good shape. I suspect also comics being t together, 
the only the acid kind of went into the corners but they were tight enough not to really bleach down and you don't really see it on that edge as much because they're probably squished together but it's a really it's a fun collection he had you know put his weekly allowance or whatever money he made every week he would buy comic books to enjoy them but also i think kind of to invest in them a little bit so I would say he took pretty good care of them. So that was a very fun collection to purchase. I was really excited to see this collection. So let's take a closer look at the comics right here. Okay, now on to the big collection. This is the collection that, uh, it's a lot of fun. I mean, there's a few key issues, a lot of stuff I have already, but I just like getting big runs of stuff in decent condition. And I like that he told me he would go with his weekly allowance and he would buy them at the comic shop off the spinner racks. Okay, we got DC Comics Presents Annual Number 1. Uh, if I miss any of these that are particular keys or valuable, let me know. DC Comics Presents Number 2. Firestorm Number 5. Firestorm Number 4. Firestorm Number 3. Firestorm Number 2. Firestorm Number 6. So I think these are all the second series of Firestorm. Firestorm number seven, Firestorm number eight, Firestorm number 10, Firestorm number 11, Firestorm number 12, number 13, number 14, number 15, Power Lords number one. I always like the comics based on toy lines from the 80s. Got Omega Man number one. Uh, I think he was speculating on this a little bit because he bought two copies. Omega Man number two. And those are the only two he bought. If only he had speculated to one issue later. Sergeant Rock Annual number two. Sergeant Rock Annual number three. Sergeant Rock 372. Warlords Annual number one. New Teen Titans Annual number one. I like that cover, it's cool. I mean, some of the proportions of the characters are a little bit odd looking, but I love painted covers. Uh, New Teen Titans Annual number two. Night Force number one. On the white issue, you can really see the acid burn. Night Force number two. Night Force number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. Number nine. Number 10, Firestorm 16, ROM 33, ROM 34, ROM Annual Number 1, Giant Size Archie Series Number 524, Mega Man Annual Number 1, Tales of the Teen Titans Number 4, Starfire, Number 3 with Changeling, basically Beast Boy, Number 2 with Raven, and Number 1 with Cyborg. Those are cool. I think I have all those four, but they're still pretty awesome. Uh, Atlas comic, the Tarantula, number two, missing the back cover. So that's kind of worthless. And the Tarantula, number three, a little bit earlier bronze in here. House of Yang, number four. I kind of want to put a full set of Charlton comics together. Just, I like the covers. Baron Werewolf's Haunted Library, number 37. Marvel Team Up, 126. Marvel Tales, 137. 148 Amazing Spider-Man 237. He didn't really have too much Amazing Spider-Man. I kind of wish he had more. Peter Parker 75. Richie Rich Cash number 17. Richie Rich and Jackie Jokers number 48. Richie Rich number 180. Buck Rogers number 4. I kind of also like the comics based on 70s sci-fi. Dazzler number 4. Defenders number 77. Doctor Strange number 59, Hulk Annual number 12, The Thing number 1. He had a couple of more modern comics mixed in there. <laughs> Not sure where these came from, but Scooby Doo number 1, and Flintstones and the Jetsons number 1. Peter Parker 23, Peter Parker number 31, Peter Parker number 76, number 80, number 105. Uh, Fantastic Four number 250, kind of love that cover. 251, 252, which is a sideways cover, which is cool. I got the bag and board a lot of these. Uh, Fantastic Four 253, Fantastic Four Annual 17, Tales of Asgard number one, 
US one. Uh, does anyone want these comics? <laughs> number two, number three, number four, and number five. Uh, we got the official handbook of the Marvel Universe. Number one, number two, number three, and number four. The thing number two. Thing number three, Team America, number nine. That's another series I just don't know if anyone's buying. <laughs> number 10, number 11, number 12, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number one. Just watch, sometime in the next you know, 10 years they'll do a TV series and these will become highly sought after. <laughs> Number two, number three, number four. Okay, we got New Mutants. I'm getting a lot of these first few issues of the New Mutants lately. Number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven. Arion, Lord of Atlantis, number one, number two, number three, number four, Number five. Batman and the Outsiders, number two. Number one. Uh, Captain Carrot and his Amazing Zoo Crew, number eight. Number nine. Number ten. These are kind of fun. Number eleven. Number twelve. Number fourteen. Number two. Number four. Number five. Number six, number seven. Uh, Amethyst, Princess of Gemworld, annual number one. I kind of into this. She showed up in uh, the DC Superhero Girls movie, so I kind of like those. Number 13, I really like that Dr. Fate cover where she's reflecting in his helmet. That's really cool. Uh, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Night Force, number 11. Blade Runner, number one. I bet with the new movie coming out, these are going up in value a little bit. Blade Runner, number two. Contest of Champions, number one. Number two, number three. Conan the Barbarian movie special, number one. Number two, uh, Mickey Mouse and Goofy Explore Energy. I think that was like an Epcot Center comic you have to get. It's got a big stain on it though. Science Fair Story of Electronics. It's a Radio Shack free comic. That's kind of cool. And here's a different one. That one's actually kind of cool too. And another one. I guess they used to give those away back in the day. Uh, All-Star Squadron Annual number one. Vision and Scarlet Witch number one. Number two. Number three. And number four. Marvel 2 and 1 number 91. This is one of my favorite series as a kid. Number 97. Number 98. Number 99. Number 100. And he must have been speculating on this one too because he bought two copies. Another Radio Shack Science Fair comic. That's cool. Shogun Warriors number 18. I, again, I always like the toy based comics. Silver Surfer number one. Uh, Invaders number 40. Not in the best of condition. Master Kung Fu number 115. Uh, Arion number 6. Number 7. Number 8. Number 9. Number 10. Uh, this one's cool. This is an older one. Return of the New God number 14 in pretty good shape. That one's actually pretty cool. That one I probably paid a bit more for. Yeah, I think we're getting into a little bit of a stack I paid a little bit more for. Uh, Daredevil 190, Daredevil 186, Incredible Hulk Annual number 11. I kind of like that cover. It's kind of a cool cover. Uh, okay, and these are the excited that he had a bunch of. He had G.I. Joe number 2. I believe that's the first print. That's a little bit harder one to get. G.I. Joe number 3. G.I. Joe number 9. Another copy of G.I. Joe number 3. Uh, G.I. Joe number 4. G.I. Joe number 5. G.I. Joe number 6. Oh, I love these. This is my childhood right here. 
number seven, number eight. I used to go to the comic shop every week and always ask for all the issues I needed. They, uh, the one by my house would have a lot of the back issues like put away, so they had to go search for it. So I'd be like, do you have G.I. Joe number 17? And I'd ask over and over again, <laughs> waiting for the, you know, it's not like they could just go out and get it. They had to wait till someone sold the collection. G.I. Joe number nine. So as an adult, I'm really excited to put a collection of these together. G.I. Joe number 10. Uh, Star Wars number one, but this is the movie showcase version. So it collects the first few issues, I think. And then number two, and then Star Wars King Size Annual, number two. Again, this, this is kind of the stack I probably paid two or three dollars a piece for. Uh, G.I. Joe number 13, G.I. Joe number 12, G.I. Joe number 11. Okay, Detective 527. Uh, these are cool. Supergirl number three. I think I have a bunch of these, but these are upgrades to the ones I had, so I'm happy that he had a bunch of these. Supergirl number two. Supergirl number one. Uh, the Green Arrow miniseries number four. I think the, this series is worth a bit. Number three. Number two. Number one. Firestorm number one. Uh, Wonder Woman number 300. I thought this was a really cool wraparound cover. And inside it has a black and white George Perez artwork. Which is cool. I really like that. Very cool issue. Okay, so that's the first box. Okay, we have one Mad Magazine. Actually, this might have been from that other lot of the kind of beat up comics. Yeah, I think that might have been with that other lot. Uh, okay, we got Ghost Rider, number 71. More of the Supergirl, number 11. I love that cover. Uh, Supergirl number 20. I hate that Supergirl outfit. <laughs> Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes 253. All right, this is cool. Masters of the Universe, number one. Number two, as a kid, I loved He-Man. I have a near complete collection of the figures. Not main card, just loose, but still. Number three, uh, Superman Family, number 221. Superman Family, number 222. This is a uh, Radio Shack Superman. Is this worth something? I, that I, didn't, I couldn't really find or I didn't research it too much. And he had two copies of that. That's kind of cool. And then he also has Superman Wonder Woman, another Radio Shack comic. I kind of like these freebie promotional comics. Those are cool. Supergirl number five, four. Oh, I'm really happy he had a whole ton of these uh, early 80s Supergirl one. Number nine, number eight, number seven, number six. She's beating up a robot. I love robot covers. Uh, this is cool. He had a bunch of the flip video game magazine that just kind of you know it's all about 80s video games which i you know i love all the characters from the 80s you know the pac-man space invaders et very cool so we got that's the june 83 i'm not sure the numbers but july 1983 uh world's finest number 294 world's finest number 293 number 291 290 289 G.I. Joe Special Missions number one Star Wars number 10 not in the best of shape but still I probably still gave him a couple bucks for it Star Wars is so hot right now anything Star Wars is just you know easy to sell and I also I want to put a set together about five years ago I got a near complete run I was only missing the last issue and I sold it for 110 I kind of it was one of those things where I was like ah, I'll get it again it's easy to find it wasn't rare but then after Disney bought Star Wars that set you know, that went up 10 times. <laughs> I'm trying to wish I kept it. But, you know, you can't keep everything sometimes. G.I. Joe 15. G.I. Joe 14. The way I collect is I like to sell enough of the collection to kind of cover the cost of the whole collection. And then I get to keep something. And that's the probably the only way I can collect as much as I can collect. Uh, Blip March 1983. Blip April 1983. Oh, I really like these Blip magazines. Blip May 1983. Daredevil 185, King Size Iron Man Annual number three in really great shape. I like that. Nova number 20. This is a comic I thought was really cool. It's a, I believe a Mexican Batman comic. Batman El Hombre Mercilago. I can't read. <laughs> and what's even crazier is as Hulk with Batman. I don't know if it's like a, why would Hulk be on there with Batman? Oh, and there's Bugs Bunny in there too. Kool-Aid ad. 
Oh, that's really cool. Ah, I love international comics because it's something different than I'm used to. Like, you know, everything else I've seen over the years. I love it today. If I could collect a whole bunch more of these cheaply, I would be excited. Uh, Marvel Tales number nine. I think that was in pretty good shape. Howard the Duck 23. You know, Star Wars homage. I like that. Galactus the Origin number one. Ghost Rider number 45. DC First Special number three. Kind of really beat up. Uh, Fantastic Four King Size Annual number 15. A Special Edition X Men. I'm really not sure about that comic or i don't have much knowledge of that comic uh uncanny x-men number 200 now he wasn't really an x-men collector i don't think but i'm assuming he grabbed that kind of as a speculation since it's a 200 obnoxio the clown versus the x-men <laughs> i kind of like that issue and thing number four marvel greatest comics number 84 godzilla number 21 that's a series i want to put together i mean i'm probably close to putting it together but i just want to finish it off in good shape uh godzilla number 20 although it's got taped up terrors on the back that kind of sucks marvel dc presents the x-men versus the new teen titans that's really cool swamp thing annual number one micronauts number nine superman annual number nine superman special number one Alpha Flight number one. I keep finding these Alpha Flight. Alpha Flight number two. Dark Crystal number one. I really like that. That's cool. Dark Crystal number two. I kind of, in my store, like comics like these really aren't worth that much. But I usually sell them for two or three dollars in my shop just because it's uh, people love pop culture. Like my shop's a pop culture store. So people come in for pop culture stuff more than just comic books. Uh, so And something like this also would be in that genre. A team number one, Annie number one, Red Sonia number one, Red Sonia number two, uh, Red Zona Sea Devil with a Sword number one, Raiders of the Lost Ark number one. Uh, these are really cool. Crystal Crystal Warriors number two. I love that toy line. It's such a cool toy line. Crystal number three. Okay, we got Marvel Super Special Rock and Rule. It's cool. It looks like screen captures inside. But it's really cool looking to me. Uh, Smurfs number one. Smurfs number two. Smurfs number three. Uh, Sheena from the movie number one. Tarzan number three. Tarzan number 19. Thor 323. Kerbal Hulk versus Kasamoto number one. Hercules number one. Hercules number two. Hercules number four. He's getting destroyed by Galactus. That's actually kind of cool. Indiana Jones number one. Indiana Jones number two. Indiana Jones number three. Indiana Jones number four. Number five. The Hawkeye miniseries number one. Human Fly number three. More Marvel Universe handbook number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight number nine number ten okay and then we got uh further adventures india jones number six looks like he had two copies of that and uh number seven number eight number nine and then we have shazam number 16 not in the best of shape it's kind of ripped on the spot still cool though I like getting the Bronze Age stuff, the earlier Bronze Age stuff. I mean, I like the late Bronze Age stuff, but I find that way more often. Uh, Crystar, Crystal Warrior number one. Oh, I love that cover. It's got a little ding on the top. That sucks. But other than that, it's in my shape. Uh, okay, now we're getting into the, sort of the better stuff. Or at least the stuff I decided the board. We got Detective 387. The cover's detached. So I probably only gave him a dollar or two, but I love this cover. He's holding, you know, the Batman number one and his first appearance in Detective 27. You know, got the Joker and the Penguin. Really cool cover. I need to find a much nicer copy of that. Uh, DC Superstars number five. Batman Family Giant number two. Uh, this one, I think I paid him 60-70% of the value it was going for. But it's in pretty good shape. Batman 214. It's like a very good, maybe. Very good plus. Really excited to get that one. I love the older Batman stuff. Uh, Detective 526. The golden ink on this has become tacky. I wonder if that's just general with the gold ink. If most issues... I don't remember the other copies I've had in the past were tacky or not. 
but I, uh, it was just, you know, it's like sticky. You, you touch it and it kind of sticks to your fingers. This one is really cool. Detective 416. Uh, it's, you know, it's got browning, but other than the browning, it's in a really nice shape. I would say it's almost a very fine. I'm not sure how far the browning takes it from a very fine. If it didn't have browning, it'll be a definite very fine. Really, really happy with that. Uh, blip number one. I think that goes for a good amount of money. 20, 30 bucks, maybe. Batman 347. Daredevil 183. Great uh, Punisher cover. New Mutants number one. G.I. Joe number one. Uh, this, the value of this one, you know, flops up and down, but it's a really nice shape. It only has a little bit of a stain there, but other than that, it's nice. It's definitely a solid, very fine. It could be anywhere from like 25 to 50. And then the one big key he had that I paid the most for, I think I paid 40 bucks, 35, 40. So good 10, 20% of the total value I paid was uh, Hulk 271. It's in like a fine plus because it has a little bit of dirt everywhere and a little bit of creasing but overall it's not too bad oh and it also has some tears there i don't think it's better than the one that i have already so i have to compare them but i'd probably end up selling this one or if i keep it i mean i love rocket raccoon he's awesome so that was that collection i uh you know lots of good lower value stuff you know one to three dollar comics just a good solid chunk of them and you know a couple key issues so i'm, I'm happy with that lot so what do you think of this collection i mean there was some really awesome stuff in this collection and again this stuff i paid him more for the better stuff i think even these have played like 70 percent of the whatever the ebay price was so i was happy to buy this collection it was really cool Gosh, I have so many comics. It's, it's spring cleaning time. So in the spring, people start bringing comics in and I start buying collections and comics are left and right flowing into my life. So uh, hopefully if you guys like these kind of pickup videos, I'll be doing a, more of them to try to go through all the comics I'm buying. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more comic content, more comic hauls, those type of videos, and you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to my channel. I like making videos for you guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye.